So welcome out, everybody, tonight. Um, our topic for tonight is expanding your vision. This is a uh, Jay Baldwin um, business uh, discussion. So we're going to share with you, you know, our thoughts, and hopefully we'll have a bit of a discussion as well. We've got a bunch of things we've um, recorded here and or we've written down here that we'd like to discuss tonight. So I think it'll be a very good topic. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you. Those are here, that are here, but I know that a lot of people are going to listen to it afterwards. So um, hopefully this will be something helpful to you all. All right. So we'll start. Um, well, like I said, our, our, the topic tonight is expanding your vision. I just want to talk about um, yeah. what, oh, sorry, you want to move the uh -huh. So uh, just. Hi, Desiree. Hey, hey, Desiree. Thanks for joining us. Um, by vision, we mean like what it is you want to manifest in your life, what it, you know, what you're working on, what you're. It's more than just a goal. It's kind of like yeah. the end result that you're working toward. Um, it give you some direction in life. Um, yeah. Yeah. So th I feel like this is very important because we have a lot of teammates that just feel so moved and called to do this. Uh, they feel so. Um, uh, fulfilled doing this but at the same time there's some some feeling of um, frustration and I just want to clear out some of those things so that you, you can have your heart open and just fully um, go out there and just um, fly really okay and what I found was a lot of the teammates that had problems was because they were playing small and we don't ever get uh, an opportunity to hear a lot of people as um, a lot of adults tell us to think big, think bigger than yourself. Um, and so we, we reduce ourselves so much that, um, you know, and, and inside of us, we want to go out and help so many people, but then on the other end, we, we kind of suppress ourselves and keep us our, um, you know, our own spirit just small and suppressed. So um, it's really conflicting. And uh, people have come back to me and say, look, oh, you know, I, I helped so-and-so, but I don't know how, how it's going to be. And they, they don't see the vision. So sometimes I have new people that join and um, I can see their potential. And uh, they just play so small. And, you know, now some of my leaders that are gold and silver, they look back and they're like, whoa, <laughs> I'm so different to how I was, but um, I felt like the whole journey was to teach them to expand, expand their vision, expand their vision constantly, um, and allowing them to just grow bigger. I remember one time when I was teaching, um, and one of the teachers uh, that was supervising, she asked me, what do you want to do with your life? You know, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know what she was expecting as an answer, but I said, well, I love to teach and I love to help children, but also like to help adults. And I think I want to build a school in Vietnam one day and, um, you know, do other things. And she looked at me and she says, well, that's a lofty goal. <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know, you don't even know me and you're just pushing me down and thinking that I, I, I can't be bigger than what you can see here. So, and a lot of us, we, we just do that automatically without somebody telling us to, you know. But anyways, I really like this quote by Marianne Williamson and it's been quoted by um, Nelson Mandela, uh, but it's originally from Marianne Williams Williamson and it says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. Okay, and uh, that frightens us. And, um, and I feel that it's very, very true. And I tease people because I, you know, some of my friends, they, they think, oh, I'm so self-sabotaging, Jade. And I said, I know, because sometimes we're so used to feeling frustrated, feeling pain, feeling failure. You know, it's just so poopy there. But we stay there for some reason we just stay and we we try to escape and then we come right back to where we were and the, I feel like the difference is they just don't allow themselves to play big they play small all the time and so they push out and then they bounce right back 
And I said, look, it's like poop that stinks, but then, you know, it's warm and you're comfortable because you know how it feels, right? But I said, just get out of there. Get out of there now and just expand. So use your imagination and grow bigger. So when you see yourself bigger than you are now, you expect more from yourself and you respect yourself and then people will respect you. So all of these things will just spiral and just help you out. So that's, um, that's why I wanted to, to share this with you because I feel like it's a very important thing. A lot of our um, teammates that are trying to build this business, they're frustrated with themselves because they keep coming back to their poop. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about um, vision, uh, why it's important to have what a vision is and why it's important to have one. We'll talk about thinking big. Yep. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also we're going to talk about a purpose and vision, mm -hmm. um, how that relates to having a purpose, how that relates to your vision. <clears throat> so first of all, um, I want to talk about, uh, like I said earlier, vision is um, your what? That's your destination. Um, your purpose, if you want to think of it that way, is your why, you know, why you want to do these things. It usually has something to do with what gifts you have and how you're going to serve someone else, serve humanity, your contribution to the world, right? <clears throat> and so vision is, um, if you think about if the world were perfect according to you and you had the right job and you lived in the right place and everything, or you know what what it is you're searching for or your heart um, is set on and everybody's vision is going to be very different you know some some people might want really fast cars and that that's you know what they want to shoot for some people they want to live close to nature uh, and they they really get a lot of fulfillment out of you know connecting with nature or serving or you know taking care of animals or you know connecting with people or serving um, different people in different walks of life. So, um, <clears throat> and that's, that's, that's your vision. That's, that's your goal. That's where you're going. So um, like, like Jay was saying, there's a lot of us are tempted to play it safe, to set your goals and, make, you know, a low target. So something that's um, so easy to uh, hit that you're not aiming very high which um, kind of um, drags, brings us over to our next um, topic here is thinking big. Okay, do you want to um, introduce this topic? Well, what you know, for is? me, uh, thinking big is to use your imagination to magnify um, your influence and abilities. And everyone has some gifts and skills. Uh, and if you don't know, then you're not looking for it you should look and see that you have gifts and skills it could be just being able to listen to friends it could be just uh, to reach out to people your gift could be just your heart you know you, you just connect to people you want to help people um, it doesn't have to be anything big and fancy but you know using whatever the gift and skill is you can magnify that influence and do your very very best uh, at what you have with what you have Okay, so I just think of the mustard seed growing into a big mustard tree. Um, so that's, that's thinking big and allowing yourself to imagine um, more. Okay, what, what, what else did you, do you want to add to that, honey? Um, no, that's, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, the, uh, the opposite of thinking big is thinking, uh, you know, small. Um, I don't know if I'm um, explaining it right. Um, you know, very successful people, they, they th like, for instance, your goals uh, in your doTERRA business, um, you're thinking small is like, oh, I, I think I'll try to enroll someone this month. Um, or, or thinking big, you know, you, you, you want to teach, you know, like 15, 20 people. And um, so they're all informed and they can make a decision and you're going to invite all, all 20 of them to uh, open a wholesale membership. So it's just about thinking, expanding the number of people that you can serve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, you know, if you imagine yourself 
in um, on stage or um, helping people, you know, you're just allowing yourself to just play imaginary um, and to seeing yourself in the positions that is, you know, right now you're not there yet, but you imagine yourself being there and you can, um, as you build that uh, vision, you you actually um, grow into it. So that's, uh, that's what we were talking about. So I'll give you an example. I did um, Diamond Club three times. And in doTERRA, Diamond Club is um, a program where you travel and um, doTERRA helps you pay for part of your travels. Um, and uh, you just build your doTERRA business. And, and you know, and I don't know any company that, that helps you do that, but the, you've got three uplines to help you. But the thing is, you need to have an, a minimum of about 18 enrollments to continue on with Diamond Club because it shows that you are working it and it, uh, um, you know, the money that they give you as reimbursement um, will, uh, you know, will be beneficial. It's, it's, um, it's valuable. So you have to meet a quota. Anyways, the first year I played small and I thought, oh my gosh, I normally just enroll two or three people a month, you know, and they're asking for 18, that's too much. And um, the first month I got 10 people enrolled. And, and then I asked for a, um, uh, what do you call it? Extension. Extension, because I thought, oh, please don't throw me out of the program. And they had an exception and so they said, yeah, just keep going, see if you can do it next month. Anyways, um, I, you know, I tried to do my best and I barely made it, barely made it. And um, so the third time round, I thought, why am I just suppressing myself and holding myself down? And no one's doing that except I, I'm doing it to myself. No one's holding me down physically. I'm doing it for, to myself. So I made a poster of 100 boxes and I got some little circle stickers that will fit in those boxes. And, you know, I know the requirement is 18, but I thought I'm going to shoot for 100 every single month. And, you know, I thought, why not? You know, what was the difference? We played small so long, you know, what would it be like to play big? So I did that. And um, the first month I got 30 and the month after that I got 40 and the third month I got 70 enrollments because I shot for 100. But you see, you know, you get so much more than, you know, the very first time I did it 10. Right. And, you know, and I thought, Oh, I can be diamond. I can, you know, before it's like, I'll be happy if I'm silver, uh, you know, and, um, it, you know, it didn't do me any good. And I, I watch all these people and they just thought big. They thought of their influence and their potential, what they can do to serve humanity. And so I thought to myself, if I'm going to face my, you know, God and, um, you know, if he said, oh, I gave you these abilities and gifts and talents, well, why didn't you do much with it? I would feel ashamed. So I thought, yeah, of course, you know, I want to say, hey, I did my very best. So without me adding um, unnecessary, um, just imaginary limitations on myself. Yeah. So, and when I did that, I thought, oh, you know, triple presidential diamond, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So I want to hear from you guys. Um, Do you have any experiences? Because yeah. I know that some of our teammates have um, just uh, started it, but I know some of them uh, have been on the journey a little while. And from where you started to now, how have you grown your vision? Okay, everybody's on mute now. So um, to answer, just unmute yourself. Do you feel like you've grown? I can see you talking, Des. I'll unmute you. There you go. That my confidence has grown with each class that I do. In each class that I do, the more comfortable I've become um, with my presentation and with the words that I'm saying, I become more confident. And um, I think that the more confident you are, the more people respect you and the more that they value what you have to say. Um, and with that being said, I think that you know, just those experiences helps you to not be afraid to share and not be afraid to push people to their limits. Because I think 
you have to push people to get out of their comfort zone sometimes to, you know, really get what you're saying, because this is important information. A lot of times, you know, we are so into the Western medicine that when we're blocked by that, we don't see any other option. And so this is, you know, that other option that they have to look at. And so I think once you really go ahead and hit those roadblocks where you're like, I have no other answers, I have no other options, then people are really grasping, you know, for your solutions. And so I think it's just really the confidence that you have when you present something that really like encourages them to take the next leap of faith that they need to. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you saying that your confidence grows as the more classes you do. Right. Yeah, and so when people say, I'm not confident, what was the solution? <laughs> So, you know, you just have to find out what they're not confident about. Like, what's that boundary that's really holding them back? Because there's always going to be a solution. Yes, so it's just learning how to overcome that. Yeah, so when somebody thinks big and they think of the end goal, they're not going to let any of these little obstacles in the way get to them. If they right. think small, they think, oh, here's the next obstacle and that's all they can see. And here's right. an obstacle and that's all they can see. Mm -hmm. Somebody that thinks big, that has a vision of where they're going, they say, well, here's another obstacle on the way there, but I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of this. So you're saying that people that have vision um, ha can problem solve and has this problem solving mentality. Yes. Mm -hmm. I good. think confidence is all about self-belief, you know, <laughs> what you believe about yourself. Um, if you have confidence, I think the only way to build that confidence is to increase that level of belief. And we are, uh, as you know, humans, we build our belief. Uh, first of all, you know, with an idea, we can tell ourselves that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You might have all the capabilities that you need to teach a successful class, um, but you just may not feel that way. Mm -hmm. So the confidence comes from sometimes seeing evidence and that evidence, you have to create it yourself. Go out there, you teach a class. Um, you might teach five classes and one of them was a flop, but that's four pieces of evidence that you can focus on. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the, the flop. Things happen, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you, the flop can also give you confidence because you're like, I know how not to fail. <laughs> I know what failing, you know. If I do this thing and, and that's what led to that, at least I know that area and know what to avoid. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I, I remember <clears throat> Dale Carnegie was telling us a, a story about um, this businessman. He had an employee that did something um, that lost the company hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they, they asked the businessman, you know, are you going to now fire this employee? And he says, no, that was the most expensive training I've ever had. <laughs> Because that employee made that mistake and will never make that mistake again. And that is more um, yeah. more valuable than, you know, bringing someone on who's new that doesn't have that experience, that doesn't have that um, confidence that comes from acting, that comes from doing. Sometimes the only way to learn, learn something is to do it, mm -hmm. um, to get out there and do it. So when, you, when we talk about vision, um, it, it's linked to your purpose too, right? We're gonna get there. Honey. No, yeah, I'm not there. Okay. Sorry. Um, can I, I maybe go back and talk about uh -huh. the? Um, so not not. We're gonna talk a little bit about. So the opposite. Um, we talked about thinking big, and opposite of that is as thinking small. It's just not quite getting out of your comfort zone. Yep. If you're comfortable with teaching one or one class a week and one -on -ones. maybe um, inviting five people or so, something like that. Staying within that, that comfort zone is not, that's thinking small. Yeah. And you, you know, you, you, you give other people that other people, you're basically letting other people choose your, your destination and mm -hmm. set your boundaries for you. Giving away your power when you think small. So if you um, give away your power, you don't have power to change and change your your situation and change your life. You're not a, you're, you're, you're just not, not directing your ship. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's very um, easy to um, give into a victim ment mentality that mm -hmm. oh I'm I'm 
you know, the world has happened to me and I'm just got to, you know, I'm not yeah. good at this. I don't understand electronics. I can't do that. Stopping me. Yeah. And then you're, you're the victim and you are, but a lot of people, the reason that they play a victim is because they don't feel loved. And yeah. it's not necessarily the love that they need is doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily the love that comes from other people. They don't love themselves. They love themselves. They accept the love from other people. They don't have any reason to be a victim. They don't have any reason to play a victim. And so um, they don't have to play small because sometimes people are, are self-sabotaging because they want to mess up because they want people to feel bad for them. And that happens. And, and sometimes we, we have people it's not that, logical, but we do that anyway. Yeah, we, and we meet people who do that. They'll, they'll set these lofty goals and they'll mess up. Um, and it, was well within their reach and they just want someone to say oh, oh i'm so sorry mm -hmm. and sometimes they they crawl in a pit and they want to bring you in the pit as well and everybody feels sorry and and wallow in, in the pit it's just the mentality that it does happen and people just want to feel love they just need to feel love but if they truly just love themselves tell themselves they love themselves um they can overcome this need. Need it's a need to be a victim. Need yeah, for need victim to. mentality. So that's how they get attention. I was yeah. talking to a lady this week, and um, she was so afraid to let herself go get out there. Even you know, she doesn't want to be active on Facebook or anything. She just doesn't want to mess up. And I said, well. We don't want to mess up. We don't want people to say bad things about us because we're saying lots of bad things already about ourselves. So when you stop criticizing and judging yourself and you allow yourself to be loved, you give people permission to love you too. Okay. And you and, really, yeah, and you and really yeah. don't care if people are saying bad and things about you because it doesn't won't. matter. People won't because when you respect yourself, you're sending a broadcast, you know, subconscious broadcast that. I love myself and um, people love you too. I respect myself and people respect you too, right? There's some people that you know, right? You know some people that you sometimes feel like, you know what, I have to behave well around that person because it's just that the air, the, the feel that you have. And there's some people that just, you know, they just don't have character, they don't have civility and you just feel like, ah, oh, that person is just, you know, not very you know, um, you know, respectable, right? And you don't want to be disrespectful, but sometimes you can't help it because they, they're just so self, um, so self abusive in that way. Okay. Yeah. Aaron had a question. I'm going to un uh -huh. unmute you, Aaron. I'm sorry. I was not on mute. Sorry. I was yelling at my daughter to go to bed. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. I saw you had a raised hand. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I just wanted to make a comment. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, so I think that my path, my journey kind of changed. And as Jade knows, when I came to Destin and I, made, I met her, and I already knew about doTERRA oils and everything. Desiree has been very good and supportive in that way. But Jay just exudes this light and she's just so spirit filled. There was just something with her that touched me in this way. And I thank you for doing what God has called you to, Jade. And, and I just feel like we have some similar things. And I just, when you were speaking to me, it just really touched me. And I knew I was right where I was supposed to be. And that's right when I knew that I needed to leave the, the position that I'm currently in and walk in a different way that God had been talking to me about, but I was being disobedient and saying, no, 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 I'm a single mom. I can't do this. You know, I cannot do this right now, God, like it has to be later. So things have had to occur in my current office job so that the Holy Spirit could just convict me more. And then just being on some of those conference calls with you and Desiree, and just certain things that, you know, you didn't know what I was praying about with God in private and just answers. And honestly, I, 
I knew that there was a class tonight, but I almost forgot about it. And Desiree said, oh, are you getting on tonight? I was like, oh, darn, I'm two minutes late. I don't like being late. I, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Right. And <laughs> right, right. And, you know, this is like the perfect topic for me right now. Exactly what I need to hear. And I'm just having to take this huge leap of faith. I know God has told me he's going to provide. How much money that is, I don't know, but I know he's going to provide. And I like the goal that Jade has set for me. And I just want to just break through that, that goal you have for me. I want to do it in two months. <laughs> I don't know. I want to do it in even less time. And I feel like, you know, um, I just needed someone to have faith in me too. And I feel like, Jade, that's you, that you're telling me that I can do it. And, you know, I, I'm someone I need to plan. So I'm getting my ducks in a row with you and my attorney, as you know, but I can plan this and I'm, there's nothing that's a guarantee in life, nothing, not even my current position. So I know God is going to provide, but I just want to thank you for, you know, just doing what you're doing and encouraging others. And I believe too, that the bigger that you dream, then that's, that you're going to make it there. You can't have these small dreams or they're actually not very good. So I believe too that one day I'm going to be going down that little red carpet and I'm going to be like, thank you, Desiree and Jade. <laughs> thank you. I, I did it. And then I will never have to go back to this crappy situation that I'm in. And I will be able to just bring light and hope to people and not this negative kind of junk that's going on right now. I mean, not that negative things won't happen in life. I mean, I'm realistic. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not all sugary gumdrops. Mm -hmm. But um, I just want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Erin. You brought up a lot of points that we're going to bring up some more later. But, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, when you follow your light, you're just going to attract more light, right? That's what we talked about at the beginning. And people that allow themselves to sit in the dark pits, they invite more darkness. And of course, you become that victim. Wait a minute, I, I'm a single mom. Wait a minute, all those these things. No, 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 all those reasons why I can't. And then when you saw the light, you're like, wait, those are the reasons why I should. You know, I should get out of there. You know, as a single mom, I'll show people that I can do this. You know, and I just, you know, for my daughter and for me, this yeah. is why I should. I think that's the first step is realizing you can be the creator. You're proactive. You can direct your life. You can make some changes. So the first question you, you want to ask is what do you want to change? Where do you want to go? And that's, that's what your vision is. So I just want to come back a little bit to that and then we'll talk about purpose. And we have some mm -hmm. thoughts that we want to share mm -hmm. with um, relating to purpose as well. So we talked about what a vision is. Um, it's all good to have flowery words and say all these, oh, this is, this is, you know, some magical thing that you want to accomplish. But how can you find what your vision is? So there's a few different um, methods that um, a lot of uh, people in the personal development area um, talk about. There's uh, a method called the ob ob obituary um, or eulogy method where you imagine you've come to a funeral and there's all these people you know there, people from your work, people from your, um, you know, your family and your friends and everything and you realize this is your funeral. And there's four speakers at your funeral, someone representing your friends, someone representing someone from your career, something your family, um, et cetera. What do you want them to say about you? Because there's an exercise you can do. Get out a piece of paper and write, this is what I want this person to say. This is what I want to have accomplished from my life. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what, that's the end goal, right? That's what you want to accomplish in your days that you have here on, on Earth, on your Earth life. Mm -hmm. um, another method is called, yeah. So um, it's not just for work. What we're trying to tell people is your vision is your life. Yeah. So it's going to be, you know, partly doTERRA because you're in, on this call for that, but partly your family life partly you know your public life with you and your friends and so every part of your life what does it look like 
So, you know, if you, who are you, who are you living yeah, with? Yeah, so there's four people. If it's like a family you member, member yeah. you know, what kind of mom or daughter or, you know, a relationships, sister what kind of relationships that you, you would have. like to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you live, what kind of work you do, all those sorts of things. So, um, yeah. Another method is the Dickens method. You look at your, your life in the past, um, in the present. This is, uh, has reference to the Christmas Carol yeah. um, story. <laughs> Past, present, and future. So in five years' time, what do you want your life to be like? In 10 years' time, at the end of your life, what do you want it to be like? So so I want to share, Ben and I, when we first got married, I, I think we're just super nerdies in some ways, because when we first got married, we had a five-year plan, and um, it, it worked. It did it. It became what we wanted it to become. Uh, so we wanted four kids and all these things and uh, we cheated so we had twins and then we had our four kids really quickly um things sometimes yeah just work out. and then we just had the next five years planned and the next five years planned and sometimes the hows in between is really unexpected um but when you look back and you think oh all of that kind of came together in a funny way but better than what i imagined but it's your job to present the what you see you have to want to to paint a picture and then share it with God or the universe yeah. what you want so this is your direction this is mm -hmm. where you're heading and that's the benefit of having a vision sitting down going through the exercise where do I want to take my life what kind of person I want to be and you focus on being rather than having it's not about what you want to have you know what kind of possessions you want to come up with in your life it's about who you want to be and this is an important exercise that uh, needs to take some of your time yep. because once you give this enough time and energy, this will be the seed for everything else. And set aside like a few hours, go and sit in a, mm -hmm. in a park in, a, in nature or on a beach or somewhere quiet that you can sit and ponder about who you are, what, what you want to do. Yep. Um, and, and this vision is going to help set your mind at, give your mind a purpose something to look forward to and it will help you make decisions will i go down this path or will i go down this path and if you've already decided that oh this is where i want to end up that kind of helps drive which path which decisions and you can, this can help you make daily decisions we we um and you could you could um memorialize your vision in either a mission statement put together several paragraphs or you know bullet points or whatever a vision board which is a board um, with lots of different pictures um, our mind thinks and images so you put pictures of oh i want this kind of house i want this kind of health um, situation this kind of romance um, in my life or whatever um, and then you share this vision with other people and jade you wanted to say something uh -huh. about sharing your vision yeah you share with people that love and support you okay it could be your friends it could be your spouse it could be at your at your classes you know yeah sorry go on <laughs> <laughs> um okay. so so the, the thing is um you know like I, we use our us as an example because we'll pick on us um but we we tell each other what we want because that that helps the other person know what um, who you are what you like and it's funny because sometimes you think oh I didn't think about that area of um, life I didn't think about this area but when you bring it up then it's more clear and you feel like you're all on the same journey so say that um, say Erin has a vision board she can share it with uh, Desiree and I and we can you know know what to do to support her you know so we can we can do it that way um, now taking that skill okay and um, translating it to another situation so for me when I teach a class I share my vision too so my vision is to help people be empowered like what Desiree said this is another way you can take care of your health <laughs> okay so my vision so when I tell people okay guys this is what we're gonna do today for the next two hours or hour and a half I'm going to show you how to use essential oils and by the end of the class um, you will be expert. You will know what to do for your health. I promise. Okay. And then after I teach them the three ways, I ask them, I check for understanding and say, Hey guys, raise your hand. Tell me 
for this, you know, orange oil? What are the three ways we use essential oils? And then they answer and they, they feel like, whoa, <laughs> I did it. And then it's, yay, who else, who else? And then I say to them, did you see that? Do you feel that you are um, empowered? Because at the beginning of this class, I said, I'll help you feel empowered. Can you see that? And so you paint the picture. If the vision is clear, then the people in the class are not going to sit there and go, I thought I was here to buy a candle. <laughs> you know, yeah. they will really go, oh, you want us to understand that there's an alternative to health. And in their minds, they're going to try and see that too. If you don't paint a vision for people and you just teach, 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 they don't know where you're going, what you're doing. And that's why you always state those objectives. This mm -hmm. is the, these are the objectives of the class. But more, more than just stating the objectives, you're saying, this is my purpose. My purpose is, in, is to empower women. And so they see, oh, this is your purpose. This is what you're doing. This is your vision. This is where you're going, what you want to create. And so they get a clear idea of, you know, where you're headed. So when I mentor people, I ask them, so what's your goal? What do you want? Um, because I want to see their vision. And sometimes we have to probe it because they didn't have a chance to think about it yet. Um, they want something, but they haven't clarified. So, you know, I try to you know, help them think more and create more images in their mind. So you are growing spiritually and then your physical world will grow into that spiritual um, thing that you've created. Mm. So um, presenting this idea to you, but you have to actually sit down and go through it and write, write it out. And it might take several drafts. It might take a few years before you start coming up with the same thing and you realize this is it. Um, I want to talk about just looking at it from another perspective. Sorry. Did you guys want to say anything? Yeah. Any questions or comments? This oh, I want to make a comment. Yeah. Me and Aaron actually went to Hobby Lobby the other day, which is a big craft store, and they have a lot of scriptural quotes and things like that. And I was like, Aaron, wouldn't it be so cool if we could go ahead and just create a vision board with all of our ideas on it? So it's just really ironic that you guys went ahead and brought it up today. So Woo, good job. Yeah. It's just amazing how God's like aligning everything. I feel like every time we talk, like me and Aaron, like have something that we've said together and then you'll like bring up something and we're like, Oh my gosh, we were just talking about that this week. And so it's just yeah. awesome because it's little signs to us that, you know, we're on the right path and that God's telling us, you know, keep pushing forward because this is what I have planned for you mm -hmm. that's awesome because you get to have instant feedback right right exactly <laughs> I, hope, I hope i'm doing it right but oh yes there it is ding ding <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. yes amen i agree <laughs> another way of looking at a vision is a first and second creation well, this is an idea that comes from stephen covey a lot of a lot of um people speak about this as well um you to create something, it needs to first be created um, spiritually or in your mind before it can be created physically. Um, you're all familiar with the story of the creation from the Bible, I'm sure. Whereas God, he creates, and, you know, he says, this is what we're going to do. And then they go build, he goes and does it. He says, um, it's first an idea, right? And then it comes out and they physically it creates it physically. So the same thing with a, an architect um, building a house. He's going to draw it out on paper. Um, if he doesn't go through that first creation, then, um, you know, his mood and his the materials that he bought, you know, that, that will form what the house is. And it's not going to be a good house because it's not well thought out. So um, creating it um, first um, in your mind, um, is kind of like the spiritual creation or the mental creation and then the physical creation is, uh, happens when you go through and you mm -hmm. you set goals um and you work towards each goal and you just call and sometimes you can't set all the goals because you don't know the, all the whys the goals are the are the hows really you don't know how you're going to get to there but you just know that's that's where i'm going another I'm way of, the goal is the what honey yeah, the goal is the how. The, the what? No, the, the vision is the what. <laughs> the um, purpose is the how, is the why. And the yeah. goals are the how you're going to do it. 
So, um, yeah, if, if, for instance, like if you're going to drive from here to Milwaukee, mm -hmm. um, some city, big city somewhere that I, I've never, okay. never been to, I've never been there, but I can turn on my GPS. I could look at a map um, and I won't know all the turns, all the things and all the landmarks I have to cross and everything. I just have to take it mile by mile. I drive down this road until I get to that the end the end row road. You know, it's just you know, it's like going to school and getting a college degree. You don't know all the classes, all the all the things you have to, all the loops you have to jump through. It's just a it's just a game of jumping through loops and and ticking off um, lots of different requirements. You do one at a time. Uh, you don't know how it's going to go, um, but you start on that journey and you solve those things as you get to them. But you have an end goal of where you're going. So I'll give you an example of this um, relevant to our business. My friend, when she she's a chiropractor, and she started um, DoTerra, and um, she she's just having a hard time. Uh, going out there and telling people and talking to people and so we thought no if we can just get together uh, we'll, we'll talk through this so we were, actually went away we went down to another town and then we rented a hotel and we sat there together so we don't get distracted by kids and family things <laughs> anyways so we spent the t time there and it was funny because she she got out a blank piece of paper and she wrote you know me and she drew a circle of her and then she said she has a list of all these friends and family that she really would think would be fantastic. They would totally buy into um, her vision. So she had a list of people and then she went systematically, I think I want my first leader to be so-and-so and so-and-so. And she drew it and drew it. And then I thought, okay, so who is she? And she, she explained who she was, my cousin, my friend, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, another ch chiropractor that went to school with me, I thought, oh, fantastic. And then she placed people under those people. And mind you, this has not happened yet. And so as we went along, it was so real to her that I, I just sat back and laughed because she's like, oh no, she can't go under her because she will eat her alive. She's got a strong personality. We have to move her down. I have to put another person in between. Now let me think. And it became so real and I'm laughing because none of this has happened, has happened yet. She hasn't enrolled these people yet. But it just was so real and but the thing is it was so funny because we did that that evening and she could see it in her mind and then you know the year after that her team grew like that her team actually grew like that and i was just awestruck you know you just can keep going and so if you get to a point where you think oh, i don't know where else to go maybe it's time for you to pause and expand that vision some more because you've only allowed yourself to hit that rank and, oh, oh, okay, now what do I do next? So it might be just time to review. But that's another example, I feel, that she, she grew it in her mind first. Okay. Um, what I'm talking about, the, how a vision is related to your purpose or your why. Sometimes we kind of gr oh, group the two together, but a vision is kind of like your end destination. Your why is your purpose purpose your reason for um going in that direction the reason for working the business if you don't have your why um when the going gets tough and things get uh, difficult you're going to give up because there's no reason a why um purpose is also synonymous with a reason no reason to continue if it's not um making you happy and in the end that's really all what we're going for we're all, if you, you know, if someone has a big goal or uh, something, you ask them, well, why do you want to do that? Well, why do you want to do that? Why do you, it's always going to end up to be being happy, doing something that makes you happy. That's what gives you happiness. So that's what we're going to talk about is purpose and how that relates to it. So vision is the big thing and your purpose, your why is, is part of that. Um, so, um, and how do you, and basically every why, every purpose is going to follow the same kind of formula. You have some gifts, you have some talents, something special about you, something that you are happy doing. And then you have someone that you serve, someone that you're doing something for and some way that that's benefiting them. So who you are, what you do, who you do it for, how it helps them, and what they get out of it. 
So those are five different steps to your purpose. Your purpose. As you develop it, you can answer those questions. Yep. And it all boils down to basically how you use your gifts and unique talents to serve humanity. You can define humanity. Maybe you're serving mothers with young children. And by serving mothers with young children, they, they raise their children um, more successfully and happier children. That, that will then in turn serve the rest of humanity. Mm -hmm. um, so does everybody understand that, that um, distinction between your vision and your purpose? Does that make sense? Explaining it that way? Okay, yep. So that, and that's, that's how you discover what your purpose is. So again, the methodology is you sit, sit somewhere quiet where you can think. Um, think about your gifts. Think back in your life. When have you been the happiest? When in your life, um, what, what were you doing that brought the most happiness in your life? What are your unique talents? Something that you can do that you enjoy doing that other people can't necessarily do as well as you as you're doing. You don't have to be the best in the world, but something special about you. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a, a talent, a skill. Um, thinking back to childhood is good. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's you. That's about you. Now, who do you serve? Who do you? And maybe this part still has yet to come. But what can you do to help other people? And and who are those people that you can serve? So let's let's apply this in the terms of a, a doing a doTERRA business. And it really works for this because you, you see people, they have this sense of their purpose in doTERRA. They just haven't articulated it yet. And by articulating it, it will solidify your resolve and help inoculate you from trials and, and things that come up in your life. So your, your doTERRA business, um, most of the, I think it's, um, people on our team, most of, of them are ladies. Um, they just want, they feel a sense of empowerment. They feel a special connection with the essential oils, the, the natural side of it, the, the specialness and the, the, all the things that they can do from emotional um, relief to physically um, help their children overcome some sort of an ailment. Um, and the, the specialness of all the intricacies, how their oils are interrelated, it just it, they're passionate about it and they want to share that passion with other people because they find a lot of joy in it and they feel so much joy and pleasure seeing that joy come into other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it would be. They, their gift and their talent. Um, for all of us, it's different. Jade's a school teacher, and she has a lot of gifts and talents in, in those areas. And she's discovered, you know, um, energy healing and, and those sorts of things. So she uses that. We have other people on the, on the team that they're, they're just really good at um, making friends and holding parties. And so they, they do that sort of thing. Um, there's chiropractors we have on our team um, that they just that's their business they do that and they normal naturally just share it with people and they introduce people that way yeah so you're doing things that uh, can we move on to the next bullet point yeah you're doing things that you're passionate about and um, it fulfills you it gives your life meaning right something that you remember if you stumble upon it you think oh, this is really fun this is I'm so passionate about this. This fulfills me. This gives me meaning. So it doesn't necessarily have to be money making, but um, I feel like it's going to um, come together anyways, and you'll be able to make the money. Um, so Which is wonderful about doTERRA. Yeah. You usually can find a way to monetize something, and, mm -hmm. and doing a doTERRA business successfully has a, that already built in. All the overheads all taken care of for you. So for those of you who think that you don't have gifts and talents, um, you know, it could be any ability 
So think back to your childhood. That were you able to get a group of friends together? Were you that compassionate friend that people come to and tell their, um, you know, heartfelt worries and concerns with whatever it is that you can um, continue to grow that gift. Okay, so that's... Maybe we can give some more examples. Um, Like we have some friends that are really good at caring for animals. Yes. And they um, use essential oils and share essential oils in that way. And you have to know your audience. You have to get to... um, If you can narrow down your audience, it's better. Okay, a lot of people want to help the world. Yeah, and the oils apply to everybody. But if you have a narrow focus, you're more likely to connect with those people. And don't worry if you don't know um, who you're working, who your your I guess we call it um, target audience is for now. You'll see, you'll see because you'll come, they will come up, they'll come up over and over again, and it's the same kind of people. And so you can see that those are the people that you um, enjoy helping. There's going to be people that you don't enjoy helping, that it's not your avatar, and um, that's okay. And so you can just tell yourself, look, I am not helping this kind of people i mean somebody else will but i am focused on this so i think desiree we talked about this a few months ago and we discovered that um you know a certain gentleman (laughs) is not your avatar (laughs) so we thought that's okay and we feel all right about it to let him go right um and we want to focus on mums that have kids that have these same problems that we do right um concerns and then that feels so much better and then now you can see how it's these people are coming up and coming into your life because it's clearer isn't it you want to share a little bit about that just to help people understand what we're talking about so for me personally being a young mother myself um it really like when my daughter I was 30 weeks 36 weeks pregnant and I found out that my daughter had a kidney disorder so the doctors told me that she had to go on to amoxicillin for the first three months of her life and so that affected me knowing that that was going to alter her immune system immediately after she was born and so my mom introduced me to the oils and i had no idea what she was talking about at first but then once i got to the class and i started understanding what these were and how powerful they can be and how beneficial and safe it is for my kids um you know it just gives me empowerment to share with other parents and other moms specifically because I want them to know when their kids are little you know the benefits of going ahead and using something that's so safe and natural compared to something that's synthetic and man-made and made in a a lab because those have so many harmful side effects and to go ahead and hurt your child's immune system when they're already feeling sick and they're already down you know we need to boost their immune system so it's really given me the power to go ahead and share with other moms because I can relate to them and so when you have somebody that you can really relate to you're on the same level and you build each other up and it's just awesome how God's worked in so many ways through that yeah and then we found out that um, you know your hubby wasn't really your avatar so yeah. it's like why don't you get this why don't you get this motherly love and passion and right. I, we just talked and we realized hey he doesn't fit our description mm-hmm. so that's okay Right? We're okay with that. (laughs) Yes. So, you know, my husband doesn't really get the same effect because he's on a different level. He's on that father side where I'm on that mother nurturing side. And so I think that, you know, I really prayed about it and God has now put these motherly figures like Aaron in my life. And so, you know, I have other Christian women now that I can relate to, not only like, you know, with doTERRA, but also on that you know, spiritual side too. And so it's awesome how it's all working together, how we're lifting each other up and, you know, supporting each other. So it all works out. Yeah. And your vision has grown. It's like healthy families, healthy communities. You can see what you can do in this, in this world that will benefit all these people. And it's so exciting. And so when you have a day that's kind of not the best, Mm -hmm. it doesn't phase you. You think, ah, you know, I'm still going forward with this because this right. is what you feel so passionate about. Yeah. yeah, awesome. All right, we have a few closing ideas mm-hmm. about um, 
of regarding your purpose in life. Yeah, and vision. Yeah, I, I've got a I've got a quote here. I'll I'll, I'll read this first. This is Steve Jobs get, um, said this quote during a commencement address at Stanford University. He says, "You've got to find what you love, and that is true for you for your work as well as for your, your lovers." Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied, satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know it when you find it. And as if, like any great relationship, it gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking. Don't settle. So um, I, I I agree with with him. Um, you know, find when you find something you love, love the thing you you've found. Um, it go con connect with it, and, and it'll grow, and it'll just get a lot better. Yeah. So I'll clear out some myths so people can um, you know know that they're on the right path. So when you're on the right path and you feel that power, like what. Um, Desiree was just saying, you know, just feel so good about um, working with these people and the people that you found that is your avatar um, and you're on this um, path. It's so exciting. All right, you feel that fulfillment, just like what uh, Steve Jobs said. But then um, the false belief is that sometimes people feel like they have to be blissful all the time. You like know, if they if they found their life's purpose, yeah. then all work will be blissful. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be things great. Will fall they just into have to place. find that purpose, and then you everything will, else will be yeah. Great. Things will fall into place, and you will feel um, that sense of meaning in your life. But um, sometimes it's um, blisters that you feel, okay, not blissfulness, <laughs> because it's hard some days. It's so the saying was, general. "Follow your bliss." Follow your um, blisters sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, you know, even though you found your purpose, um, things will they'll still be sacrificed. They'll still yeah. be work. There's still mm -hmm. stuff to do. And it comes with the good and the bad. There's burdens that you That's accept right. along with the meaningfulness that it pr produces in your life. So a great example is just children. You know, you love your children to death, but there's some days where it's difficult. It's just difficult and um, the work needs to be done. It's difficult, but at the end of the day, you know it's worth it. So the same thing with your, your life's purpose. Um, and, you know, you've got that vision and you're working, you're working towards that. Um, but along the way, things may not be as blissful. So when people believe that if it's not fun and blissful, then I mustn't be on the right path. Okay, the, the, reason, the way you know you're on the right path is your heart you know, like uh, Steve Jobs said, your heart says, oh, this is good. And you feel meaning. You feel that fulfillment mm. in your heart. And so it doesn't mean that it's not, it's going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy the whole time. It will be good. Um, it will just get better. And yeah. I feel that way. And it's something that, you know, even if things get hard, you can still stick with it. Yeah. You can still come back to it and say, oh, I've had a bad day. Um, but this is still what I love doing. Mm -hmm. That's right, honey. Um, so it, does that clear it up for people? <laughs> so let that go. Okay. Another, <laughs> another uh, myth um, is that only certain people have a calling in life or a purpose of life. Mm -hmm. The truth is everybody has and can discover or detect. I think that's the best yeah, like description that. for it is detect next. Um, there. Um, Victor Frankl says, um, you, it's up to us to detect our purpose in life, mm -hmm. detect what life is asking us. What is your purpose? What is your mission in life? And it's up for us to, to de detect that. And so everybody has a calling. Everybody has a mission in life. It's up to you to detect it. And you, you can follow those same things. Um, you know, ask yourself what gives you the passion. I think we've already gone through that yeah. um, of how you can detect it. Another, um, myth yeah. that um we, we want to clear up is um that you there's only one true calling in your life and if you don't find it you're messed up <laughs> that's not it's like um uh, finding your one true, one true love of your life it's something that you just need to detect you you um 
you grow, um, you work on those talents, you, you build that skill. And things evolve um, and change. Something right for you. And things do evolve and change. And, you know, you, it might be very difficult to monetize that love that you have in your life. Um, but as long as and you might not be able to monetize it at that moment. Um, you know, it's like when you first get started in doTERRA, um, the um, financial rewards are, are there, but they're not huge. It's not going to replace your income right away. Um, it's once you get into it and you build a momentum and you, you, you're stick, growing. Stick with it. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. growing those people and you're serving them. And you're, if you focus on service, if you mm -hmm. focus on bringing good to other people, that will grow. People can feel that energy and they'll connect mm -hmm. to that. That's right. And um, the other myth is if you are on doing your calling or um, for being fulfilled, that you should have, um, should be fanfare, should be recognized. Yep, you've discovered your life's purpose and the world will take notice. And thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But sometimes, you know, some people, they find what they love and they have passion about in life and they quietly go about, you know, you know feeling their purpose in life, feeling their calling and, and having that passion. And, you know, it's, I know it's, it's, God will take notice, you know, and you will have that bliss and that, and that happiness that comes from following your, your passion. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have a million followers on YouTube or something like that. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. it's not as glamorous um, but uh, you like the work of a mom. But it can be very fulfilling and very full of meaning mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the last one. Meaningfulness in life is found in your work. Um, it's not what you do for um, a, to make money and what you do for a living or to you know life. for your life doesn't always necessarily need to ha have to be the same thing. It's great if you can monetize um, what you what you do, um, what you love doing, um, but that may not be the same thing. Now, to bring that back into DoTerra, it's easy to monetize that sharing um, yeah. or empowering other people with essential oils. It, the the system's already set up. You just need to impact the lives of many, many more people. Well, that was the most exciting part for me because I like making friends and I like reaching out to people. I like listening to people's, um, you know, heartfelt concerns. And I tell people that, look, I feel so awkward because uh, with small talk, I don't know what to say in, <laughs> in that situation. I just feel lost. But if you want to pour out your heart and soul and tell me your deepest, darkest secrets, I'm here. <laughs> it's just weird. Um, but, you know, now I can monetize that. I'm like, oh, I have an honor for that. <laughs> so I got so excited about, look, I can be me and still and grow this business and be paid for being me. Mm. So that was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, that's all we have to share with you tonight. Yeah. Any questions or, or comments, any, and we want to hear from you. If you have anything you'd like to, if you have something you feel impressed to add to the discussion. Yes, Barbara, I'm going to unmute you. There you wait, wait. There you go. All right, Barbara. Uh, do you have any uh, recorded classes online? where someone could actually see a class being conducted? Okay, um, like us teaching a class online? Or yes, uh, have or does doTERRA have a class? We, we, have, online? we have lots um, of classes mm -hmm. where we've taught um, in introductory classes and, and examples uh, where Jay's teaching me, you know, to show how uh, introductory classes is taught. Um, they were done last year, so they're not really fantastic. Yes, um, so the answer is yes. We have a lot um, where we've taught people an introductory class or a wellness class on all sorts of different topics. I think um, there's over 100 different videos um, that we have. That's online. a good question, Bob. And I'll, I'll, I'll just, let me, let me show you where to find them. I mean, I know you do the classes on the oils, you know, every Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was wondering if you have 
yeah, a video of where you're truly giving a class to people. Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay. Um, this, the oil classes are, are designed for new people too. We do have some new people who open the floor up to intro yeah. discussion. Yeah, and I think, um, Barbara, maybe you're um, specifically interested in seeing a class taking place in the same room, having a, a local yeah. class instead of online. Yeah. Um, we do have an example of an introductory class being taught. Um, I'll just share with you. Can you see that? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll just go into business training. And there is, so here's a bunch of topics we have here. I'm um, teaching in intro classes. Uh -huh. First basic topics. So there's, there's a... The this is a lesson of, about teaching a class um, and some handouts there and then at the bottom here there's all these videos about teaching an introductory class where we're actually teaching it to you online and here's an introduction class example that's the one I think you're asking for okay um, Jade was teaching me so we, I don't think we've gone perfect through, uh, yeah it, it, it actually um, it's annotated to say this is what we're doing and behind in the teacher's mind this is what she's trying to accomplish at that point in the class so um yeah that's that's a good one to i'll do. share with you i i think i hit i'll show silver. you some other stuff yeah Go ahead, i think i hit silver before i even saw somebody teach a class really oh, it was wow. gold. okay she became never been to a class never looked watched somebody teaching a class and she was gold before she actually attended another essential oil class with someone somebody else teaching. Because I, my mother-in-law was like, "Oh, look at these oils," and I got some. And then I called up the cousin who enrolled her and said, "How do I get more?" Right? And so she enrolled me over the phone, and that's how I joined. Um, but I'll tell you the secret. The secret is your heart, your love. And I felt a strong sense of purpose that this is something that everybody needs that I need to share. And so, so I I'm learned looking for online. Some more examples for you. Yeah, yeah, I learned online of what these oils do, and I just shared from the heart. Like what you know, Desiree said, you know, you've got another mum out there that has a kid that's not well. You say, ah, well, I I use this and this and this, and then she asks the question, what are essential oils? Well, essential oils are like this. And then she asks another question, and then I just teach. And then the next time I teach, I change that up a little bit, and I, I'll say, okay, well, let me tell you what these are. And then I, you know, it's just evolved. But yeah, I, I taught heaps and heaps of classes before I even saw somebody actually teach. And I got it down to an art. So that's what I share with the, the team. Yeah, and you don't, you don't have to go through the same um, trial and error. But the principles are the same, um, and hopefully that, I mean, if, if, if you go through those classes and those videos and you don't find what you're looking for and you still need some, like, still would like to see something else, um, we can do that same sort of thing again. But we put a lot of time into putting that video together, and it has, yeah. it's been annotated, and, um, and we can always create more stuff if, if it's going to be helpful for people because we want to see other people succeed as well. Okay. It's so impressive, your site. Uh, it, it's just a wealth of information. Oh, <laughs> she's giving me the well credit. Done. I'm the webmaster. Yeah. <laughs> I have ideas. I mean, like, I'll put it here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And any, your feedback is, is thank you. Thank you. It's good. Yes, we'll have to say, you want to say anything else? About vision, about anything. All right, we're going to go ahead and start, stop the recording here, but we'll stay behind to answer any questions you might have. Thank you Thank for everybody. You. And we know there's a lot, a lot of you that are listening in on the podcast, um, on the audios of these call, these um, online classes. Um, we'd like to thank you for um you know, listening in and, and those of you watching us on YouTube as well. Um, thank you for your time and, and leave comments on the bottom. Um, you know, share with us your thoughts. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.